Today we make our Stevie bed. It's so blimmin' easy, it's really absurd. So grab a hook and yarn and a cup of tea, and you can make a Stevie bed with me. All right, so let's get into it. To make our Stevie birds, and here's a and here's a couple of them here that we saw in the introduction. We are going to need some basic bits and pieces. First of all, you are going to need some Merce, I make it with mercerized cotton yarn. You can use any um, types of yarns that you like, but um, usually I make these with a two and a half mil hook. You'll also need, you'll need to, if you use a larger, a thicker yarn, need to accommodate, use a bigger hook to accommodate for that. And of course you'll get a bigger birdie. First, what do you need? Apart from your yarn, and you won't really need a lot, many grams of each colour, you can kind of use up your little scrap balls, is you'll need a two and a half mil crochet hook, uh, a, a darning needle to sew bits together. Um, now I do have for his eyes two, yep, there you go, two six mil safety eyes. If you're giving the toy any toys to little tiny little tiny kids probably it's a better idea to embroider the eyes and and things on so they because they are safety eyes but you know when they want to bite something off they're going to bite it off and we don't want our babies to choke and also you can sew bits on together with the yarn so with the similar colored yarn so i think i've sewn this guy's wings on with the purple yarn here but the thing I love to use is invisible thread. Look at that. You can, I don't know if you can even, you might be able to see the shine of it there. So you can sew your bits and pieces of your army groomy together and you can feel like Wonder Woman in her invisible jet, but you'll be like crafty Wonder Woman. Um, and I really like that because then it means that like with, um, when you sew them together, well, hang on, where's some sewing stuff that's happened? Probably around the back here. You actually can't, you can't see the finish. Um, you can't see like the, the threading in and out. It's quite, it's quite nice. I don't know if I could focus on that. Just looks like they're kind of, look at that, they're kind of mystically sitting together. Okay. Oh, and scissors. Ta-da. Because that's, and those are the basics anyway. You all know that, don't you? Of course you do. So to start off with, we're going to make the body. Here's an example of a, a Stevie Bird body just on its own and we're going to start making that. Um, I'm going to use this pretty yellow to make the body. Let's move all these bits and pieces out of the way. And to start making Stevie Bird's body what we do first is we simply start with a, a chain of 22, 22 chains. So we'll just chain 22, one, two, I'll try and make it so it doesn't go blurry, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, whoops, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, did I say 20 or 22? We actually need 22 stitches, 21, 22. We need 22 stitches to start off with. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Hooray! Okay, 22 stitches. And um, we will start by our first a row of single crochets and we'll start by single crocheting into the second stitch from the hook. And we will just single crochet across into each chain except of course for that very first one now remember I do try and keep it at um, 
me working at a nice even pace. If I'm going too slow for you, you can speed up. If I'm going too fast, hit the pause button and rewind. Um, when I'm doing, when I'll be working on a row where it's just sort of, you know, a whole bunch of normal boring stitches across and there's nothing tricky to do in the middle, um, I'll probably f do a, like a fast forward where you can watch me sort of like those old fashioned movies where I'm going blah, 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 all the way to the end and that, um, and so you can pause if you like, but it just means you don't have to sit there silently watching me crochet across and it means the video doesn't go for that much long and YouTube doesn't get pissed off with me. Crocheting along with me. Awesome. It's like we're all sitting around the dining table together. Okay, so that's row one. Row two. We're going to, at the end of each row in this body, you chain one and then you turn. Now row two, we're going to start off by doing two single crochets into that first single crochet of the previous row. Then we're going to single crochet in one single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the end and then in the last stitch we're going to do two single crochets again so we've got an increase in the first and last stitch of row two some people might call their beginning chain a row but nah it's a chain let's let's just let's not make things too complicated just pulling out some okay so at the coming up to the end of row two and let's see and then we work two single crochets into the last stitch and so we've got an remember we've got two single crochets at the in the first and two single crochets in the last okay so that's we pull that tight yeah that's two rows next chain one of course and then turn now for chain for rows three and four it is it is dead easy all we do is we it's one single crochet into each stitch that's all um, there's no increases or decreases and at the end of chain three, uh, sorry, at the end of row three, remember you chain one and turn. And then for row four, it is another row of just single crochets. So you'll get to watch me do this in fast forward now. Just remember if you want to, if you want to sort of work on this, because um, this is going to speed up in a sec. If you want to work on this and you're working on it in real time with me, just remember you can pause the video or you can rewind if you get confused. Don't forget to chain one at the end of row three. Now we're at the end of row four. How are you going? Fantastic. Yeah, that was easy. Now, row four. So we'll chain one and turn. This is how our work is looking. Let's pull that little thread if it tries to open up. Okay, so now we've done our chain one. Row five, we're going to do two increases the same as row two. So we're actually going to do two single crochets into this first stitch. Like that. And one single crochet across each stitch, into each stitch until we get to the last stitch and then we will work two single crochets in the last stitch as well so it'll be two single crochets then I think it's like 22 maybe 21 then a single crochet across into every single stitch across and then two single crochets in the last stitch and that will give us a total of 25 stitches for this row when we're finished. Oh. Nearly there. More than halfway. 
it's always fiddly working with yarn and hooks this that are small like this yeah awesome okay whoopsie and remember we're now last stitch so we've got to do two single crochets in here one and two into that last stitch chain one and turn okay we've got some fun in this one in um, this is row six we're going to inc um, increase so we've got three extra stitches in this row we're going to start off by doing two single crochets into the first stitch like one two now we're going to work um, <clears throat> 11 single crochets as in, or 11 stitches so we're going to do a single crochet for the next 11 stitch in each of the next 11 stitches so we've got one and then in the next stitch two and then in the next stitch three four five six seven oh, eight nine ten eleven now we're going to do two single crochets in this next stitch after we've done those 11 single crochets and now another um, 11 single crochets, one in each of the next 11 stitches. One, two, three, whoop, four, five, <clears throat> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we've got one more stitch to work into, the last one, and we do two single crochets in this one. One, two. Okay, let's have a look. See how it's kind of starting to kind of fan out there a little bit. So we'll chain one and now we're up to, you should have now after that there'll be 28 stitches, 28 stitches in a row. I'm sort of trying to keep it sort of here so that it doesn't get too blurry when I come in like that. Um, hopefully it's clear for you. Now we'll turn our work. And row seven is just easy. We're just going to single crochet across each stitch. No increases. Just one single crochet into each single crochet of the previous row. Okay, now we're at the end of row seven. So I'm working into the last stitch. At the end of row seven, because we haven't had any increases, we should still have... Uh, 20 we should be up to 28 stitches and we'll chain one at the end of the row and turn that's how we're looking hopefully you're looking that way too let's give myself some more string here I mean I know it's yarn but it just feels like string doesn't it okay row eight we do have some increases we're going to increase once but it's only in the middle so we're going to first work um, that we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first 13 stitches so we'll count one and then in the next stitch two three Seven, eight, 
nine, whoop, ten, eleven, twelve, and then thirteen. Once you've done 13, in the next stitch we'll do two single crochets in that same stitch. One and two. And now one single crochet into each of the next um, stitches to the end, which is actually 14. Um, doesn't matter that it's a little bit off centre. It's just that we're increasing. And we're nearly there. I didn't really bother counting there more because I know that it's um, 14 stitches across, but you can count along if you want. Nothing wrong with that. And so that means at the end of this row, there will be 29 stitches. At the end of row 8, there's 29 stitches across. Chain 1 and turn. Looking like this? Of course it is. You're doing fantastic. Hope you're enjoying a sunny or a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Here it's autumn and, um, and it's actually 28 degrees Celsius, would you believe it? Now row 9, all we're going to do is single crochet in every single stitch across so we're not no increases at all, just one single crochet in each stitch across. All right, working into that last stitch, and now we'll chain one and chain one and turn. So now we're up to we're about to start um, row ten, and with row ten there is uh, there's a th we're going to start to decrease actually. We're going to do a little decrease, and that'll be fun when we get into it. So what we'll do first is we're going to single crochet once in each of the first fourteen stitches. So we will start with a single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <clears throat> eight, Nine, ten, eleven, there we go, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now for fun, invisible decrease. If you don't know what it is, I'll step you through it, but I also do have another um, YouTube tutorial about how to do this and I'll, I don't know how close in I can come because the camera goes a bit fuzzy, but what you do to do an invisible decrease is we actually insert the hook into the front loop only of the next stitch, let's see, front loop only, and then you kind of use your hook to hook around into the front loop of the next stitch after that. So <clears throat> I've got two front loops here. I'll do it again. Watch, watch closely, lovelies. Front, uh, insert the hook into the front loop only of the next stitch and then into the front loop of the stitch after that. So you're basically picking up two single crochets. Uh, ignore the back loops. Then you yarn over, slide through those um, loops that you've picked up so that then you will only have two loops left on the hook as if you're about to do a normal single crochet you yarn over and then slide through those remaining two loops like so basically you've done a single crochet but you've done it through two single crochets so two front loops I don't know how how close can I get in there you go so then when we do the next one in there so a single crochet into the next stitch Oh, try not to let, let the camera focus. Look at that. That's your invisible decrease right in the middle there. Right there. Can barely notice it, but we've decreased. <clears throat> okay, so now we simply single crochet across to the all in all the remaining stitches. One single crochet in each.
Um, so that was um, 14 single crochets, an invisible decrease, and it will actually be um, 13 single crochets across to get to the end. So 14, decrease, 13. <clears throat> And I think we're now in the last stitch and chain one after that. Ta da! So now it's starting to have this funny kind of, it's doing all sorts of weird things. It's like, what are you doing? You're increasing, you're decreasing, you're making me all weird shaped. That's the point. I will turn. So now this is row 11. Um, so with row 9, we went up to 20. Um, 29 stitches across row 10 we went back down to 28 now we're in row 11 which will take us we're going to do another invisible decrease so first of all after you chain one and you turn we'll single crochet once in each of the next um, 13 stitches one two three Good, I was getting sick of counting. I kept feeling like I was hypnotizing you with the sound of my voice. Now we're going to do an invisible decrease. Remember, insert your yarn into your hook into the front loop of the next single crochet of the previous row, and then use your hook to hook around into the front loop of the next single crochet of the next um, of the previous row after that. Pull through both of those front loops. Got two loops left, yarn over and pull through and now we're going to single crochet in to the end and this actually will be 13 stitches 13 single crochets across uh, that was row 11 that we've nearly done we've only got four rows left to go can you believe it because this one this piece is only 15 rows wide long wide 15 rows Whoop, get in there bugger there yeah. all right chain one because now we're going to do some serious uh, more invisible decreases okay so we'll turn our work row 12 we're going to decrease twice so first we will single crochet across in one single crochet in each uh, of the next eight stitches. So I just did one, two, oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, eight. We'll do an invisible decrease. Front loop and front loop. Yarn over. Pull through those two front loops that you've got on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. Now we're going to single crochet the next seven stitches. So we'll single crochet in one and then in the next one two three, four, five, six, and then seven. We're going to do another invisible decrease. Uh, so we'll front loop, yarn into the front loop, yarn into the next front loop, like that. Yeah, focus, come on camera, get your bits together. No, doesn't like it. It's being grumpy. 
So yarn over and then pulling through and then yarn over. Oh, don't mind me, that was just my phone. Then we'll just um, single crochet into the remaining, should be eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the last one, chain one, and then we'll turn. Okay, so now we're up to row 13. Unlucky for some, not for us. This is going to be fun. We're nearly there, three rows left. So we're going to single crochet, going to work actually two single crochet in this first stitch. One, two, and then we are going to single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to um, invisible, so we've done seven, we're going to now invisible decrease. Front loop, next front loop, yarn over, pull through the front loops, yarn over. And we're going to single crochet in each of the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and then another invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop. See, I kind of basically grab up that second front loop with my hook. And then we'll increase in, uh, sorry, we'll single crochet in the last um, stitches across. One, two, three, Seven. Now I've just done seven. What I should have said before was we're going to single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. In the last stitch, number eight, we're going to do two single crochets. Like what we copy what we did at the beginning. Um, and so we're going to single crochet into the two single crochets into this last stitch. One, two, and chain one and turn. Oh, how's it going? See it's kind of getting this real scoopy shape. We're getting there, we're sort of getting there. This is sort of the top and we're shaping our belly as uh, our belly and so now what we'll do is row 14 we're going to work a single crochet into each of the next seven stitches of the previous row and then do some invisible decreases. So that's two, three, four, five, six. So we'll chain one <clears throat> and turn. Now what we're going to do for row 13 is first we'll actually do two single crochets in that first stitch. So we're going to do increases and decreases in this one row. So we'll do two single crochets as an increase in the first stitch. Whoops, I picked up some extras. There we go. One, two. And then we will single crochet in the next seven stitches across. So we'll go one, two, three, Seven. 
Now we're going to do an invisible decrease, picking up the front loop of the next stitch and then the front loop of the second next stitch along, yarn over, take it through those two loops, you should have two loops left on the hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. Uh, now we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches of the previous row, so we'll just go one, two, is that two? No, it's three. What am I doing? Where am I? Who am I? What's that strange smell? I don't know. <laughs> two. Oh, so that's actually four. Sorry guys, I lost track. Five and now we're going to do another invisible decrease. So we'll go into the front loop and then into the next front loop, yarn over, pull through both of those front loops, yarn over again and pull through the remaining two loops. And then you should single crochet in the next seven um, stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, give myself some more yarn, six, seven, and then two single crochets in this last in this last stitch here. So we'll go in. God, I always do it too tight, I think, or it's just too tricky in the last stitch. Do you have that problem? I do. So we'll go one, two. Now, that was row 13. If you were to count, you should see how it's doing this curl? Now it's got a definite curve from those decreases. Um, all right. So now we'll go invisible decrease, yep. So we'll go chain one and we'll turn. Uh, and our row 14 is seven single crochets across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here's some fun for you. We're going to do two invisible decreases, um, one after the other. So first we'll do the first one as usual, picking up that front loop, hooking and picking up that second front loop, um, slide, I would say slide through both loops but it never really works out that way, and then yarn over, pull through both loops, and we'll do it again slide into the front loop of the first stitch, into the front loop of the second stitch, yarn over, bring it through both of those loops, two loops left, yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. Now after that what we're going to do is do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, whoop, two, three, and once again now two in, invisible decreases one after the other. So front loop, oh, front loop. I'm trying to kind of angle it in so you can see. Front loop, yarn over, pull through those two front loops. Oh, uh-oh, I lost it. Come back, there we go. Yarn over, pull through. Next again into the next stitch, front loop. Then grab the front loop of the stitch after that, yarn over, pull through those front loops, so pull through two loops. I'd like to say that it slides easily but often it doesn't. Yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. And then we just single crochet into every stitch to the end. You're like, phew, thank goodness all those invisible decreases are finished. Oh my gosh, they're driving me nuts. Well, 
just you wait lovers because we've got row 15 the final row uh, but we've got a whole bunch of invisible decreases in there just for fun just because I love torturing you all no not really we need to kind of form his belly okay so chain one turn look how curly it is now see starting to really form his form his little um, underside okay so now we're going to single crochet in the next seven stitches single crochet in each of the next seven stitches of the previous row so I just did one two three four five six seven and now we've got four invisible decreases in a row four of them you ready okay get yourself comfy okay front loop front loop yarn over pull through the two front loops yarn over next that's one front loop front loop yarn over pull through those front loops yarn over that's two now front loop front loop and over sounds like I'm just reciting something for you but I tend to kind of do it in my head when even when I'm on my own um, how many have we done now oh god I've lost count have we done four can you believe I lost count I oh, uh, yes we have no we've done three front loop for no, I think we have done four. Can you believe it? How unprofessional. I completely forgot whether we'd done them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Okay, one more. Sorry, guys. Ah, that's right. Front loop, front loop. Right through. You know that when you're counting and you're crocheting and then you kind of lose track because you start thinking about other things? Now we crochet in each stitch to the end and um, it should just be six stitches. Two, three, four, oops, five, and oh, my tight little end stitch. That was a bit tight that one. Gosh, I'm naughty. I must have been feeling tense and tension. There you go. There, we have actually done. What we're going to do now is actually slip stitch these two um, these two sides together. Can I get it around? See these? They're going to join up now. And we're going to slip stitch them together. So what I do is I start off by getting the other corner, finding the, the opposite stitch on the corner, and starting off with a slip stitch I know it's probably a bit unwieldy and cumbersome but then I kind of turn it so that I'm working you know right to right to left and I just make sure I match stitch match each sides of the stitches together and slip stitch in each across move it there How are you going? I know this is where it's like, ah, where's the next stitch? I don't know, I can't find it. Um, as long as it kind of matches up and it looks even when you've, oops, sorry, move it down. When you um, finish doing it, um, then it should be fine. Shouldn't be any dramas. All right, and I'll do one more in the end in the middle there that's where it sort of all joins up and that should be it so I'm going to um, cut my yarn doesn't need to be doesn't need to be really long because we're not going to do anything with this and you and then we just knot it off and I don't um, you don't even need to sew it in because it's army gurumi when you stuff him you can have all your thread sitting around inside See, there we go. We've just done our body. Here's his little bum. And he sits like that. Fantastic. So now we're going to get ready to do the head. 
Ta da! We are, I've picked this bright pink because I'm leery and I love color. I love colorful, bright things. So, move all that stuff off to the back. First, we start with a magic ring. Do you know how to do a magic ring? You can watch my tutorial video that I also have on magic rings, but basically what I do is I wrap the string around my finger like that, slide the hook in, pick up the other yarn. Uh, this is the long working end of the yarn. Pull it through and I kind of then yarn over and pull that through and that kind of firms and knots that magic ring. And then I start working six single crochets into this ring. So yarn in, pull through that yarn, two loops and yarn over and pull through so that's one two three four five six okay now you grab your tail end thread and you pull it so that it's almost completely closed. You've got like a little mini horseshoe. You see the mini horseshoe? Oh, this camera, seriously, it's not going to focus. That's ridiculous. Okay, so we've got a mini horseshoe here. With amigurumi, you constantly work in spirals. You don't finish, if you're working in the round, you don't actually finish the row and then chain one and move up. Um, you just keep working in spirals. So you need to find your first single crochet that you made into that uh, magic ring. And the reason why we don't pull this magic ring completely tight is because it can make it a bit too hard to work into that first single crochet. Um, so into this first, into this first single crochet and in each of the six single crochets of the first row, round, we're going to do two single crochets into each stitch. So giving a total of 12. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, What I'm going to quickly do is get my stitch, got, stitch marker, aren't they cute? Uh, and hook it into the first single crochet of this second round. Oh, I got you a pain. Okay, there we go. So there's one, two, one, there's the first one there. And then we know we're going to work two in each or a total of 12 stitches into this second round, but it just helps so that we don't, if you lose count, it is so easy to lose count when you're working in the round. And you don't want to hear me constantly counting, although you will. I'll probably do some more counting. I hip you, hypnotize you all into counting all the time. All right, that's, whoops, nine, ten, oh, annoying when that happens, eleven, twelve. In row, in round three, we are going to work alternately of two single crochets and then one single crochet. So in the first stitch, I'll re-pin. We're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch two single crochets in the in the next stitch then one single crochet in the stitch after that see how we're going it's like two and one two and one all the way around so this means we are increasing six times in this round so in the previous round we ended up with 12 uh, single 12 stitches in this we will have a final stitch count in this round of 18 stitches Okay, now we're up to round four. Well, nearly lost it. Let's give myself some more. Give myself some more string. 
Um, and in this round, I'll do my first stitch. We'll start with, we'll actually, remember the last one, it was two and one. This is going to be two and two. So it'll be two single crochets in the same stitch. Stitch marker back in the first stitch. So I just did two. And then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Round five. <clears throat> What we're going to do is, so now you have it in that round, you have a total of 24 stitches. Round five, it's the last increasing round. And so this is going to be, there's my first single crochet. Where's my stitch marker? There we go. Come on, little guy. In you go. Clip. So you do two single crochets in this first stitch, and then one in each of the next three stitches. So we've got one, two, three. So uh, let's see, see how close I can get. So we've got one, two, and in the same stitch, and then one, two, three, one in each of the next three stitches. And that's how we'll work in pattern around for the rest of this round. And remember, this is our final increasing round. Okay, so we're at the end of round five, um, now we have, I'm just sort of giving myself a bit more yarn here, I'm going to tighten up that magic ring, there you go, can't see it now. Um, now from rows six to eleven, it is simply one single crochet in each stitch, no more increases. Um, my tip to you would be to remember to always use your stitch marker because my golly it's so easy to get um, get lost remember forget where the beginning of your row was so it's basically six seven eight nine ten eleven so six rows now of single crochet around and so you don't have to watch me do all six rows um, I am going to I think I'm going to kind of fade, I'm not going to fast forward it through, I'm just because it, it can take a long time. Um, and I'm just simply going to cut to the end. Remember, guys, you can pause this video, work through your six rows from, you know, six to 11 of single crochet, and then come and meet me at the other side. And by that stage, we will be ready to fit our little eyes in and, we, and make our beak for Stevie Bird. Won't that be cool? We'll all be caught up together. All right. Don't fear. Just remember, it's single crochets all around. Uh, one in each stitch, and it'll start to get that really cool. Like if we look at this guy, it'll start to get a really cool kind of dome. It just start working straight down and get that dome shape. All right. See you in a little bit. Possums, I'm back. Gosh, it seems like ages ago since I last spoke to you, which it was. It was actually probably about an hour. I've had lunch and, you know, finished doing my head. Have you finished doing your head? Have you got now, you should have a total now of 11 rounds for your head. Um, and now that is it for, the, that is it finished for the head. What we'll do now, I'll just remove my stitch marker, which marked the beginning of <clears throat> round 11. And I'm going to snip. I'm going to give myself um because we do sort of use actually for this part of part of the tail end of this to sew the head partly partially onto the body. So I kind of give myself a good oh, six or seven inches because we all need a good six or seven inches. And um, then I'm going to fin tie 
sort of tie this off actually what I'll do first is because they have finished the end of the spiral there just to kind of make it a bit smooth I'm going to slip stitch into that next stitch but like a slip stitch and then sort of do myself a little knot finished what happens now a couple of things one of the first things is eyes we need to stick his eyes in um, the positioning of the eyes fun and games uh, the eyes are positioned between rows eight and nine and how I kind of do it if you look at the string here what happens is I'll get one of my Stevie birds here um, is I tend to um, put this string, this leftover yarn thread, to be more correct, so that it's going to be about, uh, would you say that's like, is that about 10 o'clock? About 10 o'clock on the, on the play school clock up around here, and then position the eyes accordingly, because when I start sewing the head together, I sort of start from here, I stitch it around, because the back and the um, the the back and the body will be stitched up by that stage, and then you put the head on last. But I stitch from here around, and then I leave a gap at the back there um, for stuffing. So that's why I kind of when I position the eyes, I have it so that this tail end is sort of at this position here. So then what we do is we count um, eight rows. So we go. Let's see. Let's use my hook so I can point, my magic pointer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's row eight right along here, and here's row nine. So we're going to stick the eyes in between these, in between these eight and nine rows. So keeping in mind, if we do it here and we stick the first eye about. Hmm, where's my other one? Do, 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 do. Yeah, about about there, about there-ish. Make sure it's sort of even. Gosh, I lost count of my eyeballs out, out of my rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's in here. All right. So we we'll position I one in between rows eight and nine, like that. Actually, I should not go. I should go like that. Now there is 10 little gaps in between each eye coming along the front so we're not including the hole that you stuck the eyeball into we're starting from the next little space in between the crochet so we go one two three four five uh, six seven ish eight nine ten now there's that tenth hole watch what I'm doing here I'll just do that I, I don't normally leave this hook in just to show you but then in the eleventh that's where I'm going to stick his other eye and I'll just remove that so in the eleventh hole on the fairway all right Whoop. see that um, and then to secure it you'll need to pop these little backs on here to hold them I am not going to just simply go look this is how we do it and it sits on nice and easy because it doesn't it's actually they're called safety eyes for a reason it's really hard to get this backing on and it will involve teeth um, and you don't need to see that trust me um, so I'll, I'll do that in a minute um, but what we're going to do now to finish the head is we're going to make the beak. So, um, what colour should I do? What should I colour do to do the beak? Let's make the beak. Hmm. Let's make it. Maybe should we go teal? No. Let's go light orange. Light orange. Yeah, that's kind of cute. No. Let's go dark orange. Bang! Let's make it. dark orange beak. Okay, sorry, I'm bashing the camera with the wall here. Yarn, yarn, sorry. People get really anal about whether it's called yarn or wool. I'm a bit old school. Okay, how to make the beak. Um, 
starting with the color and and I whatever color I do the beak this is what I also tend to do the feet in um, like look at this guy he's got a nice soft yellow beak and then or sorry deep or soft orange and then soft orange feet and then this guy also like he's got light blue and then light blue feet okay starting with uh, we're actually going to start with a chain three so this is very quick to make but a bit fiddly so a chain three ah oh, come on you one two three now work five double crochets into the first chain And, and I'm using US terms because um, that's the way I was taught using US terminology. Uh, it sort of makes a bit more sense to me than the UK Australian terminology, but I am frequently flayed by my fellow Australian crocheters for being unpatriotic to crochet terms, but you know, too bad. I eat enough Vegemite for any Australian so they can just suck it. One, two, three, four, now five, that, <clears throat> that first chain that you're working into will keep opening up but you can keep pulling that closed. Now pay attention. This is tricky. What we're going to do, we've got this little half circle and what I'm going to do is in that, um, I guess would be the third big of the beginning chain three in the third chain, which is really kind of sort of, if you can see it there, I'm going to slip stitch in to the third chain of the beginning chain three, slip stitch. And I'm going to actually cut my yarn now. Give myself a bit of a couple of long tails, and um, you sort of pull it up, pull it so that it pull it off, so it's sort of in a, a bit of a a funny. I don't know if you can really see. It's like in a little cone, a little cone with a little there's a little gap in there, and I'm going to finish that off. Sort of not the end, so it's all kind of nice and tight and firm and this is then this is the beak now the beak obviously it's going to look a little bit weird because it's sort of like this but we're going to sew on with this end and then we're going to finish it with this end um, what you can do and only you sort of do it it sort of depends on whether you want to or not and, and whether you feel it's it's necessary is sometimes you can get like the teensiest little bit of polyfill oh that's what I forgot to tell you at the beginning you need polyfill um <laughs> is you get a teensy bit of you need polyfill to stuff your bird um a teensy little bit of polyfill fill and if you want you can kind of if you feel it needs it you can kind of get that tiny little bit and stuff it in there stuff it into this tiny little triangle just to give it the beak a bit of a fuller look it's it's not strictly necessary but you know because because things and how we're going to attach it where we're going to attach it is between uh, is where the bottom of the beak is going to start from between rows um, 10 and 11 which is, if you remember, it's 11 rows in the head. So row 11 is obviously the bottom row, and row 10 is the next one up. And how I do it is thread on a needle, and I start by just sort of going, because the bottom of that thread is kind of where the bottom of the beak is and I sort of insert it into the middle between the two eye, the two front eyes. I hope you can see that okay without me blaring into the microphone behind the camera. So sort of stick it in there. And it's 
it's easy for this to start to go a little bit off kilter and then I'll just bring that thread back through again just because this is it's not because it's like professional or sciencey it's just because this is what um, is easier for me and then I just sort of surface sew it together I don't you can sew it right in pull pull the thread out the other side of the head but I tend to kind of whip stitch it to the top to the face of the bird that's just me might not work for you and you know what that's okay as long as those two bits stick together and look kind of bird like and don't sort of look too kind of plastic surgery Michael Jackson-y sorry Michael not good to speak ill of the dead let's keep going stitch it around I want to try and make sure we still kind of keep it in um, the middle of his face oh, come on just trying to find the right thread to get into move that keep that bit out of the way don't worry we'll deal with that in a moment and let's get that through Like he's got a funny nose, and and in the last in the last attaching stitch, is he is he kind of even? Yeah, let's just ignore. The think that is for the moment. Draw that through. With this extra, look at that. That looks terrible. It's like he's got an extra long booger. You sew that on. I oh, sorry, thread that onto your needle. And you can just see insert it into the little whole tip of his nose and through to the other side. Trying to shape his nose so it comes in. So you want it to kind of go in and block that hole off, but um, but also not suck his nose in his beak in too much. Uh, we then. You just all it is is you just then tie a knot on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish his beak and his eyes and hook his eyes in and then um, and fade to black and then come back and and show you his finished head and then we'll move on to the back. Cool. All right, hang in there. And we're back and his head is finished. His eyes are firmly in place with the stitch mark. Uh, sorry, with the with the backings on them. My mistake. And his little nose is tied up in there. His, uh, sorry, beak. He's a beak. He's a bird. Um, that's the head finished for now. So we're going to put that aside uh, and not do anything further to it. We need to make his back now. And the backing I usually make to be the same color as the head. So like a bird, it sort of has this continual sort of flow through. So once again, so we've got head, body. Right, we're getting there, guys. We're nearly there doing fantastic oh, knocking the camera around yeah I'm not going to pretend to be a professional camera video tutorial person because um, I'm not it's just you and me sitting down having a cuppa and I'm showing you something okay to make the backing this is pretty quick we simply chain 12 start with a 12 chain one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve uh, and now starting from the second chain from the hook you simply single crochet into that single into that chain and then you single crochet into the remaining chains across and then once you this is row one once you've finished row one, um, you should have 11, it sh should be 11 stitches or single crochet stitches across. Now, we are now going to, at the end of each row, you chain one. And from rows two, which we just completed row one, now rows two to eight, all we do 
is we just single crochet across so we're just doing it's going to be a total of um, eight row uh, well sorry we're on to row two now you do this up to row eight it's just um, single crochet and I'm due to the magic of camera thingo stuff um, all I'm just going to fast forward it so just do eight just do your completed eight rows and I'll see you in a fast forwarded second and just remember you can pause rewind do all that business if you do need um, if you want to go back over it again or just if the fast forward goes too fast for you to catch up which it probably will because it's a faster version of my slow manky kind of crocheting here All right, so we're at the <clears throat> the last part of the eight rows uh, of row eight. Now, with row nine, previously you would have um, done a, a chain one and then turn. We're not going to chain one, just turn. And uh, what we're actually going to do is actually skip the first stitch and we're going to slip we're going to directly put our hook into the second stitch and slip stitch or the second um, not this first single crochet gap here but we're going into the next one slip stitching into that and then so we're basically skipping a stitch and then chain one uh, then we'll single crochet back into that same stitch and then single crochet across till we get to the second last stitch of this row so basically we're missing a stitch on each end on the beginning and at the end where we're not crocheting into those so we're reducing <clears throat> by two stitches so we were at 11 and now at the end of this we'll be doing we'll be at nine so I've skipped that last stitch and then um, what we do actually here is we chain one and we turn, single crochet into that first sing, um, stitch, single crochet of the previous row, the same one that we did the chain one from, and we just single crochet across. And we'll do this for this row again and the next row. So that will give us a total of, I believe, 11 rows. And it'll be eight rows of 11 stitches and um, 9, 10, 11. Then 9, 10, 11 will all be nine stitches. Whoop, chain one. And this is the last row of the, of the back part. And then it gets a bit. Then we start sewing pieces together and it gets a little bit fiddly. It gets a little bit fiddly, but that's all right. You and I will do this together. We'll come out with a little birdie each at the end. That'll be cool. What are you going to do with yours? I just kind of have them on the shelf all together. And, um, and sometimes I give them to friends as, or family as gifts. Okay, so this is what this finished piece <clears throat> I did not finish off. That's, I didn't finish off, but this is what the finished piece will look like. Um, and then I am going to, where's my stitch marker? I'm going to use a stitch marker to stick it in the, the loop from, that our, sing, that our crochet hook was in. Let's pull that so we don't lose it. And now we're going to attach stuff together. How, how do I do this? Oi, this is a bit of fun. Okay, so... Here's our body. The way this goes is that the back will attach to the back of it. And we kind of work for it, we'll work a little bit inside out. So I'm going to turn him inside out, which isn't sort of a big deal. And now we're going to need to keep crocheting with this pink in a little while. But if you put it here like this, dangling out this way, when you want to crochet, you'll kind of be it'll be caught inside the work because we'll be crocheting um, when the pieces turned right back out the right way so I kind of 
Hang on, we've got so many strings here, don't we? We're strung up to the max. So I get this yarn and I pull it. So it's actually going to be tucked up. Whoop, tucked up inside. Coming out this part here. Trust me, it'll be um you'll need it to be that way. And then how we actually stitch it together. You might have long ends here, you might not, you might want to use the um, invisible string which is, gosh it was here a minute ago and now it's rolled off the table I think. Um, and we're going to actually stitch up each side to sew these together. And it's, and it's a good idea to try and make sure that when you're stitching them up, each side up together, sorry, so many strings, that you're matching row for row. So. Alright Groovers, welcome back. Now, I have stitched up the two sides and I've tried my best to make sure that I did it with matching row to row, like there, it's pretty close. Um, now what we're going to do, because this is inside out, is we're actually going to turn him out the right way, like this. And if um, you remembered to make sure your yarn was sticking sort of through the inside, which is now the outside, that should all come out right. And you can still see that's where we're going to, I've still got the stitch marker holding that half finished stitch. So now we're going to do the tail. Uh, and the way we do it, take the stitch marker out, is because we've got these two pieces now sewn together, you just pick up that um, thread again. Of course, this is going to be a pain in the back, so we'll move that. There we go. It, now, it should be stitching evenly across the back here, like this. So, I'm going to, uh, and we're working in the round, so I'm actually not going to chain one. I'm just going to single crochet directly into the stitch from the previous row. Go uh, one. Two, this is going to form the tail. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on. Doesn't want to come through. I've got a thread. There we go. Eight, nine. You might have. You might end up with eight or nine stitches across here, depending on how you sewed it. The important thing is we need to get sixteen stitches all the way around this opening because we're going to sew around, the, stitch around the opening to form the tail. So I had nine. So that means I am going to try and create seven stitch single crochets across this yellow kind of under his bum let's be honest it's under his bum isn't it so we go one two three four oh, I'm getting ahead of myself five Six. I'm going to be stretching this, aren't I? I'm going to be a bit cheeky with his sewing of his tail up. Seven. So really, that means now I've actually done 16 stitches around the um, around the opening of where his tail is. So what we're going to do now is we'll stitch, we'll single crochet directly into the top of the first stitch, working in the round spiral army gurumi style, and we're going to count and single crochet around. Um, I believe it's, uh, we'll just single crochet around, I think it's 11. So I've just done one, two, three, Nine, ten. Then we're at 
11 and now we're going to do an invisible decrease remember how we do that it's um, sorry if I'm getting too far away for you so we'll do an invisible decrease by um, crocheting picking up and crocheting into the front loop only of the next stitch and then the front loop only of the stitch after that yarn over pull through those two loops yarn over and pull through these remaining two loops on the hook and then we'll crochet into the remaining one two three stitches let's see one two whoop, come on three it's a bit hard when you're working so small in the round and now we'll crochet across this time we're going to crochet again um, I believe it's also 11 so we go and that's now we're working into the top of the first stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine oh, where are you? 10, 11, so now we're sort of into the back part again uh, and after crocheting 11 we then uh, we're going to do an invisible decrease and this is where it starts to get a bit tricky, a bit small and fiddly. Front loop, hook up that front loop again, slide it through the two front loops, Whoop, missed it and then yarn over and slide through the last two and then single crochet into the next two stitches of the previous round so yeah we're getting really small now aren't we look how small that is uh, and now the next one is we single crochet eight One, this is slow fiddly going, two, don't worry if it's feeling fiddly for you, it's fiddly for me as well, three, four, five, six, Seven, turn it around a bit more. Eight, and then we do an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop. Slide through the front loops, yarn over, slide through the two remaining loops. Right, so now we're at the back. So now we've got to crochet three starting from the next stitch one two let's see if I can oh I'll just have to backtrack on that I stuffed up that stitch so that's one two and then three and then we do another invisible decrease front loop and then front loop yarn over front loops yarn over two loops and then it's by this stage we're kind of like where the beginning is we don't know we're kind of getting <laughs> we're kind of getting close to the beginning again so single crochet let's count 10 one we're sort of at the beginning here two 
So I'll bring it in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Oh, 10 and now we're going to do one last invisible decrease front loop front loop ah got it hopefully that's not too blurry so sorry if it is um, slip through those two front loops yarn over through the final two loops now to finish what we're going to do is simply to make it so that it's not kind of a jagged edge we'll just slip stitch into the next stitch slip stitch cut off your yarn and just pull that through and now what you're going to do is where if we try and make sure that his his whole this line down the bottom is central we're going to use the thread on the needle and sew this closed. And then his and then once you finish sewing it closed, you then All right, we're back. So now that I've sewn this closed, what we're going to do is attach the head to the body. So to do this, we turn the body inside out like this. And here comes the fun and tricky part. We actually get the head and we turn him upside down like this. And we, if you can see my body is facing forward, this is the front of his chest. And we're going to drop the head in. Now the beak, you want to try and make sure that the beak is centered um, and tucked in so that we're going to basically, we're going to basically stitch around. So where we had that, remember that long thread from the head? We're going to use that to sort of do all, almost all the way around, but not completely so we can stuff it. But most importantly is we, we do need to make sure that the head, um, the beak is sort of front and centre so we don't end up with a little birdie that's kind of looks like he's looking off to the side. Um, so he's facing frontwards. I'm just sort of trying to check that. It's not too bad, I suppose. You could have him looking off to the left or the right if you want to. Just means he's got a bit of character. I'm going to center it and kind of secure it just with a stitch marker. And I'm just going to hook in to that, those middle, those stitches there at the front, like that. Now I'm going to thread on this yarn onto my needle. And thread all the way around, like just, just simply stitch. I'm actually going to stitch, um, let's see if you can see this with that. I'm actually going to stitch um, th from the front loop of this body to the back loop of the head. So it's kind of like you're using the two outside loops and you're just stitching them together. This is what's called a whip stitch. I don't know. But um, it kind of has a really nice finish to it if you do it that way. You just work around every stitch for every stitch. Alrighty. Okay, so I've just sewn all the way around and now I'm just kind of doing a knot to, oh that was a terrible knot, to um, knot this bit closed. Got it, got it. Yeah, knot that bit closed. But because I only stitched around from here all the way around to here, I've got a gap here, which is great. So we're going to carefully turn him back um, the right way. Look at this poor little squishy bubba. And turn him back the right way. And now we can put the stuffing in. 
So I've just got some polyfill here. I'm just going to start stuffing. And also, if there's any um, strings that are hanging out the, out here, you can actually, that can just go in, they can just get stuffed in as well. We hide them away. That's the leftover thread. I'll stitch up the back with invisible thread when I'm finished. And I just sort of tend to stuff him a little bit at a time to build up the, um, the filling because... And that means it's easier to kind of make sure he's evenly stuffed. And I like to make sure the body's quite full. Not packed full, but enough to be, um, I don't know, medium, medium density, I suppose. Alright, I actually have to stop the video and start again because... It was, um, and go away for a little while because, oh, gosh, I was having a hard time threading that invisible yarn onto the the, needle, the invisible thread onto the needle. Oh, my gosh. Okay, now we're sewing up the back. Are you sewing up the back? And you sew it up like this. And we make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so what now that you've just watched me in a bungled way manage to finally sew the back up, it was only because I kept losing the thread through the needle, um, which was very annoying. And then I'm getting old and I can't see when I've got to thread it again. Oh my gosh. So what I've then done is I got all the little threads on the needle and I sewed them back in and through the body to the other side. And then you kind of um, squish it closed close to where you're going to cut it and cut it. And then when you pop them back into shape then the thread just goes and gets sucked back into the body and you don't see it so there look at that he's all sewn up he's looking fantastic do you know what the last thing that we need to do now is we need oh no so we've got two more steps the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to embroider on some um, some feet onto the bottom now where I find where to put his feet is I actually get my pins on my pin on my little pin cushion. That's one of my cupcakes, and I position. I find the center point. Remember where we stitched up here and where it's bent. I just kind of put a little pin there just to go right. That's the middle. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt him a bit. And yeah, that's the middle. Now uh, this is just sort of my way that I kind of figure out where I'm going to go. And then I want to just come across a little bit over here. That's going to be, I guess, the straight across is going to be like the, well, that's not exactly square, is it? Like the base.
base point of his little feet. Get another one and we go across for his other feet. And we just pop that sort of about there. How, look it, it comes, how far that is, look I'd say that's probably about maybe six, seven millimeters, but it comes down to you and, and what you, what sort of feels right for you. Oh, this one, maybe I'll go around here, a bit closer over here. Uh, what do you reckon? Does that look pretty even? Yep, great. And um, the next step too, we've got to sort of figure out where we're going to put the um, the top part of his, I, I just sort of go, well, where's his first middle claw going to go? And this is like, you might not even need to do this. You might be super awesome at making sure things are straight. Um, instead of me, who's a bit uncoordinated. There we go. And I'm, I'll tell you now, I'm pretty crap at embroidering. So won't this be fun? I'll do my best. But this is how I do my um, my little feet. Uh, the first, One of the things that I do is I actually will cut myself a nice generous piece of string I just sort of cut it open cut it open like that then I'm going to thread it onto a needle and we've got that darning needle for there it is that's my problem I don't know if it's yours my problem is I put things down and I can't remember where I put them do you do that? Alright. Okay. Right. So, I don't think we need that middle one anymore. And what we want to do, I sort of insert the thread kind of a bit here. Now this is more just because you kind of need to create remembering where our um where our start is. You kind of need to anchor the thread to the um, to the bottom of the bird so that you can start embroidering. And it's sort of it's not a, a, the funnest thing in the world to do to try and do it so that you can't see it. You might even have like a little knot at the at the bottom, which kind of shows. Oh yeah, this is where the bottom of his little um, little feet are. Looks really cute. You might be super clever and and know a, a tricky way to hide your your embroidery um, knots, your anchoring knots into the thing. I'm going to try and do this. I've hooked around a couple of little threads there. Pulled it into a loop and I'll just pull that into a little knot like that. And that's going to anchor our Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remembering where our first point here is because they have usually, you can have three or four claws. Um, I've got one little guy here who's got four and I've got another little guy here who's got three. Why don't we do four today? So I actually just will embroider them through like this. Are you awesome at embroidery? Then don't watch what I'm doing. Because I'm crap at it. I can crochet though. That's claw number two. Kind of give them a bit of space. And claw number three. And claw number four can be just here. Now, because we don't need to come out here because we finished this claw, but we need to go over and do the next claw. I actually, even though I'm doing fourth claw here, I actually send the needle all the way over to this other side where we're going to do this other, start this other claw. Pull that out and I just pull that through. Then I've got one little claw. Stick it in there. And through. One. Now we 
don't need that pin anymore. I'll put that away because I'll probably stab myself. Two claws. There's three claws. Look at that. Looks pretty cute, doesn't it? And then four. Now, to finish this off, well, it's a bit wide. A weird monkey. I want, I need to make a knot. So I kind of like hook the needle around some of those threads. Like that. So it comes to close to a little loop. Stick that in. And let it pull closed into a knot. Oh, my grommets are being, my grommety kids are being loud again. Now, because we're going to hide that thread, that end thread in there, I'll just pull that through. Mm -hmm. Gonna lasso his tail. Now, watch. Sort of hides in there. There you go. And at this end, I'll just squash him a bit, cut the thread close but not too close to the crochet stuff we've been doing. Is there a string here somewhere? Yeah, there is. And it just gets sucked back in. And look, little feet. Hang on, come on camera. Focus, do your, fo do your camera focusing job. Yes, we can kind of see where I knotted it. Let's just ignore that. You'll do a much better job than me. And he's got two little feet. There, he's done. This is the body. Now we just have to work on the wings. What do you think? Does yours look like this? I bet it does. You've been following me closely and we're, we're doing it together. Let's see if we can get him squish, squish. There you go, and he sits. Ta-da! Let's look at him. Let's get in. Hey buddy, how you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for making me. Let's go play. <laughs> no, come back. You need wings. Alrighty. <laughs> right. So now we've got our little birdie. Now we need to make his wings. Now I've already... Look what I did earlier. I made one of his wings. So to, we're going to make the, second, the next one together. I'm only going to show you how to make one once. And then when you want to make number two, you can um, rewind back to the beginning of the wing um, tutorial bit and start to make number two. All right, so the colors I've selected is these three pink, soft, it's a softer pink. Probably can't see because it's bad lighting now. And um, this cute aqua and a soft green. So we'll start off with the soft green in the middle. Uh, and let's see. Now, what we'll start off with is with a magic ring. Uh, hang on, I'll just move up and make myself some space here. Get out of the room, everybody. All right. So, starting off with a magic ring. And with this magic ring, we're actually going to chain three to start. So, we'll go... It's a bit tricky when you're chaining on these things. One, two, three, because we're going to do double crochets into this magic ring. And now we're going to work 11 double crochets. So that first chain three is representing one double crochet. And that was a dodgy one, wasn't it? So now we'll do 11. So that was one, two, three, Finally, 11. 
So with our beginning chain three, that means that we have what's like 12 DCs in a magic ring. I'll grab this tail end from the beginning of the magic ring from the beginning and pull it closed. And then we will finish it off with a slip stitch to the top of the thir three chains, the third chain in that chain three to close our, oh, come on, doesn't want to, I want to make sure I get it in securely, there we go, like that, and snip the thread, and then we need to knot this off to finish it off, so we'll do that from the top, and we'll also pull our magic ring closed as tightly as you can and look to to make our jobs easier later it's good to kind of sew in your ends as you go and you won't have a million little threads sticking out and also I kind of use the the thread closest to the um, that was the beginning thread to actually help pull that magic ring tighter and we'll get that last thread sew it on and let's use that to help close that gap a bit and then just weave it in just a little bit. You don't need to be too fussy. It's not so much about hiding it, it's kind of more just making sure it's dangling out of the way because the back, and you saw it against the back, you would, sorry, you'd, there's the front and there's the back and you'd sew them into the back and it's more just to get them out of the way and I'll just cut them. I don't have to be too fussy about cutting them ridiculously close to the cotton because they're going to get tucked behind when you sew the wing onto the body. Next grab your second colour which for me is the pink and we're going to add that in just join it in anywhere in the top of one of the double crochets of the previous round. You can start it this is going to be a series of single crochets so you could do a start off with a standing single crochet which some people some clever clogs know how to do I'm just gonna do it I can do that too I like doing those but I'm just gonna do it this way because it's alright so in each um, what we're gonna do is work in sequence so you actually just start off straight away don't worry about a chain um, or we could do one chain there we go and then two single crochets in the first stitch and then, is that, no that's one, goodness, and um, then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So the sequence that we're working in around is two single crochets in one stitch and then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So it's almost like two and two. Let's give myself extra thread there. So there's two single crochets in the one stitch and then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Did I just work? Oh, I almost put two in the same one there. That's a bit silly. And now in the next one which is a bit hard to find when you've got one of these join businesses. Where's the next one? There it is. And um, so it's two and one, two, and there's two in this one. It looks a bit funny because I had to just work over the join which is very frustrating. Well, oops, no I skipped a stitch. Oh my god, how unprofessional of me. I'm trying to teach you and I'm stuffing it up. Shh, don't tell anybody. There we go. So this one we're working on two in this one. And 
One, two, like that. And then two in this one. And then one single crochet in the next stitch and one single crochet in the next stitch. So what we should have now, because we've increased, is we should have 16 stitches around. Let's just double check, because you know what? Between Just between you and me, I usually stuff this up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yes! High five. Then we'll just join with a slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. And tie it off. So in our ends, I know, you know, it is laborious that I'm doing this, or it seems to be laborious that I'm doing this while I've got you here, but it's it's sort of, I guess, um, a time-saving mechanism, because I'm assuming that you're doing it with me as well. You don't have to, but you could do them all at the end if you want to. It's up to you. This is just me doing it. And I'm just going to very um, roughly kind of tuck the pink in behind the back here on the wrong side of the work I'm just going to do it once because it's going to get hidden when we sew the wing Whoop, you can't see me threading there not that you want to, it's very uninteresting but it's kind of boring when you have to look at my the underside of my meaty hands all the time must be getting old, seriously I can't thread this thing and it's as big as a barn door there we go. All right. I'll cut those off. Won't be too fussy. Right. Now, last row of the wings. And if you um if you visit my blog where this where I also which is the link to the written pattern is will be down below the video. Um, you'll be able to see the written pattern, and I think I've got a, a stitch chart in there as well. And if um, you want an actual PDF to digital download, just join your third color. Um, you can visit my there's links in my blog to my Etsy and Ravelry shops where you can download the PDF for just a dollar, super cheap. All right, here we go. This is the final edge of the wing. So what we first do is we simply chain three. After you've joined your third color, we chain three. And then in the same space, we will double crochet into that same stitch. So it's a chain three and a double crochet, which effectively is like two double crochets. In the next stitch, two double crochets. One, two then in the next stitch it's two half double crochets oh there's a half double crochet and another half double crochet and then in the next stitch uh, we do a half double crochet and a single crochet Then we do one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So one single crochet in this stitch, single crochet in this next stitch, and then in the next stitch we do a single crochet and a half double crochet. In the next stitch we do a half double crochet and a double crochet. So a half double crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch. Uh, now in the next stitch we're actually going to do a treble. So yarn over twice.
Let's give myself some more string. Okay, I've got a treble happening. One, two, three, chain two. Then do a slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Oh, a bit tricky. Another treble crochet still in that same stitch as the first treble crochet. This forms like the tip of the wing. Phew! I'm glad that's all over. That was a bit tricky. And now we're going to come back on the home stretch. So then in the next stitch we do a double crochet and a half double crochet. Double and a half double. Where we slide through all three loops on the hook. Next, in the next stitch, we're going to do a half double crochet. It's almost like we're reversing what we've just done. Half double crochet and a single crochet. Then we actually now do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, three. Now we do a, um, we actually then in the next stitch we do a single crochet and a half double crochet. Whoa, here we go. Then we do, uh, in the next stitch we do two half double crochets. Oh, this is a bit tricky. We're getting close to that beginning join, so it's a um, bit tricky to do. And buddy, shush. <laughs> yeah. And then in this last stitch, we do two double crochets. Because uh, this, this is where I did a dodgy join at the end of the last one. Oh, Got to try and stick it in there. Loop over and come back through. Come on. Come on, you tricky sucker. And I tied it off so tightly in that last stitch that I haven't allowed myself room to be able to get back through. And let's ignore the fact that I am using a different hook. Ah, oh, thank goodness for that. Ah, oh, hang on. In between the filming of the last row, I had to get up, do a few things, um, come back, a few things got messed around, and I lost my hook. Okay, and a last double crochet in that same stitch. You would not have tied it off as tightly as me, and you'll be fine. There we go. So two double crochets. And now join with a slip stitch to the top of that beginning chain three. And there we have your wing. See that? It's kind of pretty. Even though we're doing three, remember here we did three single crochets right there but up here we did two, it actually kind of doesn't really make much of a difference. It still comes across looking really even. So I'm going to snip the yarn. Oops, snip the yarn. There we go. And um, to finish it off and then if you've left yourself with a long enough piece of yarn or if you can use invisible um, invisible thread like I love doing you then can stitch the other th one onto look see Ta -da! onto your Stevie bird have you got one just like him now I bet you do doesn't he look lovely thank you for sitting with me through this um, if you've sat and watched the super long tutorial that's all in one, my goodness, we've been together for a long time. We've become great mates. And um, But otherwise, if you've watched the three, how I've, uh, I've also done the tutorial in three parts, thanks for sticking around for all three. Um, click like if you liked me. I hope you did. I liked you. Um, or click subscribe. 
and um, to stay tuned for more of my little videos that are going to come up. And that was Stevie Bird. Nice to meet you. Yay! Yay, you've got a Stevie Bird. So now you've made your Stevie Bird. It was so blimmin' easy. It's really absurd.